music to my ears now is the sound of Jane Darling from Arnold. Hello. Hello, good morning. Lovely to hear from you. I said I was going to be calling somebody Darling on the programme. and It's you. It's your surname. That's, a, that's a, an interesting surname to have. I mean, Alistair Darling is famous. Uh, is, is it one that you married into or were you christened with that? No, Jane Darling is actually my stage name. <gasps> it's not um, even... Oh, right. OK. Oh, I feel slightly disappointed now. I know, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mm. I'm married to Miss Parry. I'm a Jane, Jane Parry, so... Oh, well, that's all right then. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll, we'll refer to you as Jane Darling all morning. Uh, we, we won't go back to the, the, the real world. Uh, because you are somebody who's got a real interest in uh, sort of music, I think, of, of past times, but also how that music carries on into today. And, uh, and the notion of ENSA. Now... See, I grew up in a world where I kind of knew what ENSA was because it was something that was very important in the Second World War. I don't know how many people would know what ENSA is now. Uh, what is ENSA? Uh, ENSA is the Entertainment National Services Association and it was created in 1939 by Dean and Leslie Houston, basically to provide entertainment to the troops here and overseas. And does it still exist? No, ENSA was disbanded. Um, it actually changed um, just after the Second World War. But no, it doesn't exist, but we do try and keep the memory alive, which is a big part of the reason why uh, we are creating or trying to create a memorial to those performers who performed with ENSA during World War Two. So the ENSA appeal is aimed at creating a memorial? Yes, the Anthem Memorial Appeal is aimed at creating a memorial at the National Memorial Arboretum and there's, there's nothing at the moment that celebrates the thousands of entertainers who rallied together to entertain the troops in World War II. So we're trying to create a lasting memorial to those amazing men and women who kept the morale up of the troops during the World War II conflict. Are there specific artists who will be recognised? No, there won't be. We're trying to explore artists, because obviously lots of people know the most famous artists, which are people like Dane Deeran and, of course, George Formby. Sadler's Wells Ballet were a big part of performances during World War Two, And there were lots of other people, touring dancers, comedians, anyone with a skill. The troops lovingly referred to it as every night something awful, but uh, in, in jest. But they were very, very grateful to... I mean, it was a, ty a terrible time, wasn't it, World War Two, And anything that could help raise morale or even take you to a different place during those difficult times, you know, was valued by the troops very much. Sadler's World Ballet? How did they... Well, they, 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 they went on tour? They did indeed, yes. I know, a surprising concept. Uh, but, yeah, it was very well received by the troops. So... Of course, right at the beginning of World War II, uh, the theatres and the cinemas were closed down because mass congregation of people... You see, this is sounding very familiar, isn't it? Mass congregations of people were actually banned in 1939 at the beginning of World War II. Uh, well, there are uh, weird parallels between then and now. And uh, are, somebody, yeah. somebody who uh, bridges that uh, divide of time but uh, links the, the world of the Second World War and the world of COVID... Uh, and I can't help but do this, and it's somebody that you mentioned, uh, is um, famous for his uh, little ukulele. And I thought... uh, we just have a little bit of this. I did what I could with my gas mask, you see. We just have a little bit of this. I did what I could with my gas mask, you see. Now I'm yeah. getting very... At milking time I tried to do my share And when I found the book it wasn't there Well I did what I could with my gas mask You're never quite sure with George Formby uh, You know, he has a twinkle in his eye, doesn't he, when he's performing uh, Jane. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, you know, did he really know what he was, he was implying in some of his lyrics? Was it was he oh, a genuine? Oh, yeah, so his lyrics were very risque. 
my little mm. stick of black rock. And, mm. Uh, <laughs> mm. I'm not sure what he was uh, really up to uh, doing the best that he could in his gas mask, but there we go. So uh, the idea of uh, commemorating ENSA, the Entertainment National Service Association, is what you're involved with. How have you become involved with this? What, what was your background that's led you into this world? Jane well, my background, um, since about 2012, I mean, I've always had an interest in the Second World War, but I am a singer and entertainer. And every year I go to events all across the UK, bringing the music of the 1940s to reenactment events uh, across there. And on my travels, I met a chap called Alan Crow, who organises an event uh, in Welsh Ball, a 1940s event that normally takes place in September. And it's actually Alan who has been behind uh, this, this appeal and he started it and he asked me to be involved and become an ambassador for it. And what does that mean that you have to do as an ambassador for this appeal? Well, uh, my job is to talk to amazing people like yourself to try and spread, spread the world about the appeal and uh, and that's basically it. So talk about it at my events, talk about it when I do gigs, take my banners, take my flies and basically raise awareness of it uh, and, uh, and and get behind the appeal. Try and encourage people to donate to the fund and, uh, yeah, just, just all about the publicity. It's probably lost on the generations alive now just how important this organisation was in the Second World War, the difference it made to service personnel's lives. Oh, absolutely. And it's funny, actually, isn't it, at the moment, because currently we're being told that entertainment, we're, we're not viable. We don't have a viable job at the moment, which is completely different when entertainment was so highly valued during World War Two to keep the morale, to keep the morale of the troops up. So, yeah, different, different times. Well, I'll, I'd like to talk with you about how it's been for you under the, the restrictions that we've faced this year uh, as a professional singer. So uh, don't go too far away uh, on BBC Radio Nottingham. Jane Darling from Arnold is uh, with us talking about the ENSA appeal and also her life in music and musical theatre. More from Jane after the beautiful sound. Everybody's talking. Who was uh, inspiring you as a teenager at school, perhaps a music teacher, a choir teacher? I had a great music teacher called Jeremy Morris. He was absolutely brilliant. Um, he was he was very inspiring, actually. But, um, you know, music theatre was a bit frowned upon in, in those days. I mean, I'm talking late 80s, early 90s. Now it's much more mainstream and there's many more people going into it. So you were looked upon as being a bit of a geek, really. There was a, a, a sort of interregnum, I thought, between the, the, the classic musical theatre pieces of the, the, the mid 20th century and then people like Stephen Sondheim came along and did this sort of slightly modern twist on the whole thing and, and most people were falling somewhere between those two extremes uh, and then yeah. Andrew Lloyd Webber came along and said ha ha of course yeah and I, I think actually at the moment music theatre just before all of, all of this um, you know just just before all of this came about music theatre was really having a renaissance you know with things like the Book of Mormon which we were supposed to go and see in August and of course, Hamilton, you know, mm. is, is, you know, changed the face of it again. Mm. I've seen both of those. Uh, Hamilton was excellent. I was sadly disappointed at the Book of Mormon. I thought I would laugh more at it than I did, but. Um, I've not seen it. We've not seen no. it yet. We will need to go and see it this year. So. I hope I haven't spoiled it with my one line review for you. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, what about the. the year that we're sort of looking forward to the end of really 2020 and i think next year will be better as a, as a, a person who makes money through performing in public how have you dealt with the, the, the restrictions um it's been pretty bad i mean i've had a, a successful career as, as a singer and entertainer since 2012 and you know i've had my best year yet of course this year the VE75 celebrations was going to be absolutely massive, of course, maybe eight. And uh, COVID-19 come along with the restrictions is pretty much decimated the entire events, hospitality and entertainment industry. It's very bleak out there at the moment. And, yeah, it, it's very tragic. We're kind of treated like this isn't a proper occupation where for thousands and thousands upon people... You know, we we are full time entertainers, and it is a viable and proper job. I saw somebody tweet to the effect of: imagine a proper lockdown coming back, and then imagine not being able to watch television, listen to music, read books, all those sorts of things. 
that is uh, what will happen if artists in various fields are not supported through all of this, that there won't be new music, there won't be new books. Exactly. I think there will always be creativity, but a lot of that creativity is being stifled at the moment. I mean, I work with a lot of entertainers who have taken additional jobs at the moment, so you'll find them working in the aisles of the major supermarkets, for example. So everybody's doing what they can at the moment to get through. But, you know, when it's your passion and it's been your livelihood and your job, and I'm not just talking about performers, I've got friends in all realms of things, people who do photography at weddings, for example, theatre technicians, backstage staff. You know, it's it's massive. I think the arts contribute something like eight four billion to the economy every year. And, yeah, I do feel very strongly at the moment that we are largely being ignored by the government. What would you expect to happen from a, a, a more benevolent government then? A furlough scheme for you, or, or, or I don't know what what would you hope to happen to make your life better? I think just some kind of classification or, or difference between you know what people are doing. It's almost like with this latest raft of uh, legislation has come in, and we're being treated as we're not a viable part of society and we're being told I mean Edwina Curry's been very vocal about the fact you know she's just like well you just need to get on with it and and go and get a job um go and be a care assistant or something you know as if it's that easy you, mm. when you uh, this is all you've done or you've invested it, it's different to having what I would say like a nine to five job because you generally invest in equipment in costumes in music in hours of learning education and everything it, it's been very difficult so i think a bit of empathy and a bit of sympathy towards us would would not go mm. amiss first and foremost and a bit of understanding venues have been able to reopen and there have been for example comedy nights i know about in nottingham have you seen any bookings in your diary since places have reopened yeah, I did a great booking in Hucknall last week at a place called the Station Hotel, and I got some bookings with a, a venue in October called the Cozy Club, some 1920s work that I'm doing. But it has been strangled because obviously audiences they can't you can't encourage people to participate in singing, and you can't encourage them to shout out or laugh. So all that participation side is, is completely gone at the moment. And of course, you know venues are struggling as well. They can't get people in the door. This ten o'clock curfew has come in, so everything's changed again. And entertainment, music, you know, it does cost money, and people are tightening their belts. Venues are tightening their belts, so it's very, very difficult at the moment to navigate through. Perhaps there is a need for a twenty-first century equivalent to ENSA, the Entertainment National Service Association. We'll go back to your involvement in the appeal for a memorial for ENSA in a few minutes. <laughs> Uh, Jane Darling from Arnold. And that was the Eurythmics There Must Be an Angel Playing With My Heart on BBC Radio Nottingham. You're hearing from Jane Darling and uh, life as a performer. And uh, with the, the spare time, in a sense, you may have had in the last few months, have, have you used it creatively, wisely? Have you, have you been thinking of new things you might do in your performing world? I'm wondering what you've, you've done with this extra time on your hands, really. Oh, my goodness, we have made the most of every single moment. I mean, we have four children, for a start. Ah, so fair. A lot of question answered. <laughs> yeah, question answered. But, yeah, we've made the most of every single moment. Um, we've, we've done lots of work at home. We've worked on the website. We, I've watched seminars. I've learned new skills. Yeah, it's... It, oh, yeah, what, what have you learned? What have you learned? Video editing, uh, music editing... Um, all lots of marketing, digital marketing things. I've been working on things on my website. So yeah, lot, lot, lots of things. Been keeping very busy. There's going to be no holding you back when things return to some sort of normality. Yeah, and that's yeah, the appeal to uh, have a memorial for ENSA, the Entertainment National Service Association, has also been taking some of your time as an ambassador yeah. for this appeal. Uh, remind us again of the the ultimate aim of this appeal. What, what are you hoping to create? We're hoping to raise money. So we're, we're looking at a five-year period to raise around £100,000 to create a lasting memorial at the National Memorial Arboretum to the people who entertained troops during World War II. And how close to achieving that memorial are we? We've literally only started it in the last sort of three, four months. So we're quite a long way from, from achieving that. But like I said, it's, it's a five-year 
it's a five-year strategy, so we're hoping over the five years. It just so happens that this was created, obviously, before the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. So we, we'll try to keep working on it whilst, whilst we're going through this. So it's a long-term project. What would it look like? Is, is there an actual design created yet? There hasn't been a design created yet. Alan has just been working on the basics at the moment, so getting the charitable number, um, getting people involved, getting the awareness levels up. I'm not sure he's got as far as actually thinking about the design yet. Well, the names that people may remember from uh, the the Second World War are sort of starting to fade a little bit, perhaps. Um, yeah. We mentioned George Formby. Um, Tommy Handley might have been a, another comedian. Uh, what, what, did did any that were sort of finding their feet in Ensa become household names in the in the latter forties and fifties? Oh, absolutely. Well, as well as the Ensa, there was also an organisation, Stars in Battle Dress, and Stars in Battle Dress was for uh, those that were already conscripted in the army. Mm. So people like Terry Thomas. Um, Spike Milligan was a member of the Armed Forces, a very famous name. Um, Jimmy Perry and David Croft, who went on to write sitcoms such as The Saint Half Upman, Terry Thomas, Peter Sellers. You know, quite a, quite a lot of uh, very well known names. You know, carried on and had a very successful career after the Second World War. Mm. So it is a time definitely to worth uh, to, to celebrate and to remember. And, uh, well, hopefully next time that you're uh, out and about performing, people will learn a bit more from you as an ambassador for this appeal for ENSA. Uh, when you, when's your next gig? You got one lined up, did you say? Uh, yes, my next gig is October the 24th, and it's a bottomless brunch at the Cozy Club, which is in, uh, which is in Nottingham, and uh, that's a 1920s brunch. Uh, wow. brunch date, so, a yeah. bottomless brunch is, is it on all you can eat it certainly sounds like it I won't say what my husband thought it was um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah he said is it is a bit like a topless lunch but, uh, but, but, but no it's, uh, it's all you can eat so I'm looking forward to that I've got two dates there the 24th of October and then the 31st of October I'm not sure how long you'll have to perform if I were there with uh, an all you can eat you could be there for days I could, couldn't I? Yeah, I've got to book that a full 24 hours in the diary for that one. <laughs> Lovely to talk with you, Jane, and uh, look forward to seeing you face-to-face -face when times are better for now, though. Jane Darling from Arnold. You can find out more about Jane at janedarling.co.uk, and it's J with, uh, Jane with a Y, so J-A-Y-N-E, darling. Uh, and, of course, the Ensa Memorial Appeal .co .uk. so look Ensa Memorial Appeal, yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Have a lovely rest of Sunday. Thanks, uh, Alan. You too. Cheers. Take care now. Uh, we'll let Jane escape because uh, we're all going to go crazy now uh, with Prince. <laughs>